welcome to this demo. Uh, I will show you how to configure static IPs in our open cloud, in our open stack in our lab cloud. Um, and you can't configure this on machines that has been already created. It has to do it on uh, when you create the image. And you cannot do it uh, with the web interface. You have to do it with the CLI. Uh, and here we see a command uh, OpenStack server create. Um, that's how you create a new instance. And then we have the image. This is the ID of the image. If this is a Windows Server 2012 R2 core. The flavor, my key, and here's the interesting part. You specify the net ID and a comma, IPv4 for uh, version 4, and a fixed IP, and then the IP address. This IP address can be in the DCP range, it doesn't matter, but the address cannot be allocated uh, when you create, then you will get an error. Uh, you then can specify the security groups. I have two security groups I want this to be in, my LAN security group and RDP, so I can connect to it. Uh, this you don't have to do when you create the machine, you can do that, edit that later. I also in my machine here has a configuration file which I want to be run when the machine is being created. Uh, this is just uh, to uh, connect, uh, to set an uh, administrator password and connect it to my domain. So this script will run for most of my Windows machines that should be included in the domain. And then the name uh, of the, the server. You can specify the wait uh, argument also. Then it will wait until the machine is been created before it lets go of the command. Uh, my configuration file, this is something you haven't done before and I haven't shown you. You don't need this for to set a static IP. Um, it's just a script file. Uh, you state the top which type the script is. This is a Windows, so I will run PowerShell. Uh, I will then set some parameters: the administrator password, the domain it wants to join, the domain admin, and the domain admin's password. And then it will execute this command. So it will change the password. It will convert the password. Uh, this is needed when you are joining the domain. And then create an uh, object, an, uh, a credential object, and then join the domain. You can do a lot of different st stuff here. You can have uh, scripts for uh, for bash scripts if you have a Linux m machine that's installed different things and configure them. Uh, and then you just point out the file. So let's run this command. And now it will wait here until the machine is done. So if we go to my machines, you see here that it's trying to spin up this virtual machine. And hopefully it will be done soon. Uh, then we can go to the console. And look, it's not done yet. It has some script to be run. But here you see that it has the machine is done, so it will release the command. But the scripts and stuff that I had isn't yet configured. The one thing to remember <clears throat> when you are using static IPs, you have to have a security group which other machines should be included in which you want this machine to be. A contact. Regular in a, in a LAN you don't need to, to configure this uh, if they are uh, getting IP addresses from the DHCP server. And that's why I've created this LAN group. If you have the default group and haven't edited that, as I showed you in the last video, uh, then it should work. Uh, but I have changed my default group so I don't have the incoming rules anymore and then it won't work. 
So for this machine to be able to contact machines within the same network, you need to create a security group for that network and connect all the computers that are in that network to that security group. And the rules in this are the same as it was in the default security group before. You need to add a rule that allows any protocol and network from the specific security group. I only created one for IPv4. I can create none, one here now for IPv6. Uh, just to show you how this is done. So we need an other protocol. So we can state every protocol. And as you see here, uh, with the help menu, uh, minus one is a wildcard. So that's all protocols. And from my LAN security group. And you should have one for IPv6 and one for IPv4. We only use IPv4 in this course, but this is just to show you how you create these rules. So now machines from within this network are allowed to contact other machines within the network, the security group. Good, let's see how my instance is going. So even though it says that I should change my password now, this will be done by my script, so I don't have to do that. Uh, my script will take some time before it's executed. You can see the logs, uh, what the cloud in it, the, cl the cloud base in it. This is what the service that run on the, my machine that will execute my command, uh, my file. Uh, so this machine doesn't have a floating IP. Let's connect one to it so I can connect to it from outside the network. And then I can try and connect to this machine. Yes, the domain. You see I, that I'm signing in with the domain, the admin account. So it has successfully joined the domain and set a password for my administrator account. So my script has run. And for my script to be able to run, I needed to add the security group LAN before. Otherwise, it couldn't contact the domain controller and join the domain. That's why I stated that I wanted this security group to be added and the RDP uh, which is for for this session the first time you log in with the user it can take uh, some time and now we're logged in as domain admin and we can try to ping something within the network um, You see that it can communicate with that machine. Uh, now, this machine has got its IP from a DHCP server, but you can change that. Um, and, but you have to state the same IP address as you statically assigned because it's open. Stack has that assigned to a specific port. And if you change that, you won't be able to communicate. But with the uh, NetSH, uh, you can change. And, the IP address or with uh, S config. You can change, and you also see here that it's joined to my domain. Good, that's it for this demo. Good luck.